Picture the scene. Eight-year-old me running through the forests of Beacon Fell with a ravaging harm behind me and my mum behind this and my teacher behind this. Why, you ask? Because I have a fear of dogs. Hi, I'm Oliver, and I'm one of an estimated 15 to 20 percent of people in the UK who is in some way neurodiverse. The term is used to describe a varying range of conditions, including ADHD, dyslexia, Tourette syndrome, and in my case, autism spectrum disorder. In order to truly understand neurodiversity, it is important to understand what the word means. Neurodiversity comes from the prefix neuro, which relates to the nervous system and brain, of the word diversity. With this information, it is possible to determine that the word means different brain. Neurodiversity presents itself in different ways, and even if two neurodiverse individuals have the same condition, it can affect them completely differently. This means that they each have their own set of needs and require different methods of support. Research says that one general trait of autism is struggling to understand social cues. This means that we are often unable to read facial expressions or understand how someone might be feeling. This is perceived by some as lacking empathy. This is not the case. I have empathy, but just sometimes struggle to understand how someone might be feeling in a given situation. Another general trait of autism is being overwhelmed in areas with lots of people, such as a crowded school corridor or a restaurant. Speaking from experience, we really hate to get overwhelmed, obviously, which is why some of us wear ear defenders or use fidget toys to prevent this. Personally, I've developed coping strategies over the years to prevent this. When I was younger, I used to clench my fists and release them, or count to ten. This doesn't mean that I suffer from these difficulties less. It just means that I've developed ways of coping with them. A further general trait of autism is struggling to stay attentive during conversation. This is because many of us are hypervigilant, meaning that even a small distraction will immediately take our attention. I also struggle to make eye contact with people because it feels like I'm staring through their soul. This is perceived by some as being ignorant, but this is not the case. Autism prevents us from being able to do certain things as well as a neurotypical person could. We also love and feel the need to have a routine in life. For some people, even the smallest change to their daily routine can cause major stress and anxiety. This is not an overreaction, but rather a natural reaction caused by our condition. I'm quite fortunate because I can cope with small change as well. But this does not mean I'm not autistic. After all, autism is a spectrum disorder and affects everyone differently. Because of these difficulties, I feel that autistic people may find it harder to make friends. This was the case for me, because when I first joined Russell in Year 7, I struggled to make friends. This came as a surprise to me, because I hadn't encountered any problems with friendships in my old primary school. But as time went on, I became more confident in myself and started to develop friendships with other people. Currently, I'm a very happy and confident person on a social level, but for the first few weeks of year nine, I struggled with the sheer amount of new people who had joined my year, which made me withdraw and become shy even within long-standing relationships. But I became used to the new people, and life carried on. Despite its drawbacks socially, some autistic people, including myself, are known as dual exceptional. This means that they are often quite capable in other areas, having one or more specialist skills. In my case, this was a natural skill in maths, and when I was in year seven, I sat my maths GCSE. It was a difficult challenge, but I persevered. The stress took a huge toll on me, and I had to wait ages to finally get my result. Had I done enough in this exam that I'd spent so much of my time at primary school building up to? As the answer to this question grew closer, the stress and pressure surmounted. So, one day, I showed up to school. Today was the big day, results time. They handed me a big envelope. 
my heart was racing. I, only one result was good enough. I needed a grade nine and felt it needed me. So I tore open the envelope and inside it was a certificate that proved it. It was typed out right there, mathematics, nine. I was jubilant. I often look back at this moment to remind me that I can do anything that I want to if I put the effort in. I'm currently studying A-level maths and find the course to be an interesting and enjoyable challenge. I've only been studying it this year and look forward to learning more about it. In other areas of school, I consider myself to be a motivated student in subjects that I enjoy. My best subjects, apart from maths, are language learning and sciences. This is because I highly enjoy learning about these subjects and, my, and the way my mind works suited to the challenges provided by them. This is because my mind works in a way that is adapted to remembering words and grammar rules in foreign languages or mathematical formulae. This made it easier to read aloud when I first started speaking because I memorized the phonetic patterns of the English language. Autistic people often develop one very strong interest which they are extremely knowledgeable and passionate about. This means that they often talk about this topic at length. In the past, I've had extreme interest in Mario, learning the countries and their flags and capitals in US presidents. Can you imagine the joy of my friends and family? So, if you ever catch me talking about my latest new interest, I won't get offended if you tell me to stop, but I'll carry on talking about it anyway five minutes later. I also suffer from sensory processing disorder. This means that I can be particularly sensitive in certain situations. For example, hearing a baby cry is amongst the quickest ways of getting me annoyed. I'm also an oral sensory seeker, meaning that I've chewed my way through the world's rubber supply. But on the plus side, I experience less movement input than other people might, which means that I highly enjoy riding roller coasters. In the media, there are many different depictions of autism, some of which I found to be quite degrading towards us. For many years, most people's only image of autism was Dustin Hoffman's portrayal of Raymond Babbitt in Rain Man. But people remedied this and started creating more modern and more realistic interpretations of autism. For example, the curious incident of the dog in the night time, released in 2003, is a book that I found to do an amazing job at raising awareness about autism and highlighting its tendencies. But it is extremely important to understand that these are all just one interpretation of autism, and we all experience it differently. If I had to pick the best and worst aspects of my condition, I would say but my academic prowess helps me greatly and is a great ally to me. But the worst aspect would probably be my fixed mindset or stubbornness, because sometimes it prevents me from getting where I want to be in certain situations. Despite some of its drawbacks, I wouldn't change autism for anything, because it is part of identity and shapes who I am. It has formed many of the building blocks that get me to where I am today. And so I can proudly say that I am a member of the neurotypical, uh, neurodiverse and autistic community. I made this speech today in order to raise awareness about autism and neurodiversity, and I hope that it inspires other neurodiverse people to do the same. I would love to hear about their condition and their stories surrounding it. I would like to thank not only those of you sat in front of me today, but also those of you tuning in online for listening to what I hope was an enjoyable and informative speech. Thank you.